LRBAquatics.com. Hello, world. How's it going? So today I want to share with you guys my recipes for creating your own ferts to feed your aquarium plants from dry fert to solution. The recipe I actually use. Let's go ahead and grab these bottles here. And then we will move on into the kitchen past Wesley land here and on in here. And I will share with you guys my recipe, the numbers and all, and how I go about this and a little more. So I hope you guys are all doing well. If not, I hope it gets better for you. So what I've got here in this brown solution, this would be my micros which is this, CSM plus B. This has a lot of your iron and trace minerals. And then here in this clear one, I have my potassiums, my macros. So think micros, small, you dose a little bit of some stuff. Macros, you're dosing more of the heavier fruits. So here I've got the uh, potassium nitrate. Let's put this in order as I have it on the paper. So potassium nitrate, potassium sulfate, and monopotassium phosphate. And I actually get this from Nilo CG Aquatics, which he's got a website here. I already got it pulled up for you guys. And if you scroll over here, let me knock out this notification because I can't see what I'm doing. The dosing instructions. You can go to EI dry dosing, making liquid solutions for EI dosing. And then there's a thing called PPS pro dosing, which is more pinpointing certain things. And it has some methods. That's with dosing it just with the dry ferts. So you can do just dry ferts. And that's actually really good for feeding real root heavy plants is just using the dry ferts. As you guys saw over there by the tanks in the thumbnail, I have jars of dry ferts, which really helps. You get a scoop of that, and you can put it in there. But if you don't have time to mess with that, you want it quick and easy, and you want it in these bottles, uh, this is what you can do. Now, my recipe is a little different than his, but it's not too far off. So he's got EI Nutrient Solutions. For low light, no CO2. So it's like a third of the dosing listed. So it does depend on your setups. So if you have low tech, low lights, you wanna think less ferts. If you have high tech, high lights, fast growing plants, you wanna think more ferts. So more per uh, tank and more per the actual container. So here's also another quick, easy measurement. And he actually says, to dose both the micros and the macros at rate of one milliliter per 10 gallon seven days a week. This is along the lines of what I've been doing is actually, I guess I have been doing more of the PPS Pro dosing method. I think I did change it. I thought I was doing EI, but it's still kind of EI because EI method stands for estimated index. So whenever I'm squirting these into the tanks, it's completely estimated on what's actually going into it. But with my micros, I use 60 grams and that's per thousand milliliter bottles. I use these thousand milliliter bottles. So if you want half that, you go, if you want 500 milliliters, you go half that. And if you guys can do math, you should be able to figure that out. If not, I don't know how much you should be playing around with this stuff. Not that it's gonna blow up or be harmful. This stuff is all safe non-toxic and natural and macros i use the uh, potassium nitrates 92 grams potassium sulfate 40 grams and the mono potassium phosphate 14 grams and if you want to pause the video write that down if you have to but there's three that goes in the macro and then one into the trace then I also, since I use soft water, I use this GH booster to harden my water. 
Uh, this is real nice if you use RO or you just have soft tap water or you want to just jump the GH. This is important for plants too, the magnesium and the calcium plants really do need that as well. So you don't want to run your plants in just straight RO water. And if you don't want to do dry first in your own solution, Nilo CG also has something called Thrive that you can get. And then Aquarium Co-op also has the Easy Green and Easy Iron and some other solutions as well. But I like to make my own because it's more cost effective. These are real cheap. Like the GH Booster, I think that's like six bucks. This is like six or eight bucks. This is probably together maybe 15 20 bucks i don't i can't remember it's enough to save a ton of money because i can make a lot of these bottles with just these and then i just measure it out onto a scale put it in there spin it out and when i actually make the ferts i use ro water you don't want to use spring water you don't want to use tap water that's going to change what's in the bottle you know cause problems so you want to use some RO water. If you don't have your own RO system, you can buy it at the store. But you want to take that, boil it into a pot, and then uh, put your ferts in there. Then let that cool down. Then you get it into the bottle. And if you had evaporation from the pot, then you just top it off with a little bit of RO. And that'll get your solution to right where you want it to be. And that way the ferts will actually be melted into it. And if you don't boil your water, First, the first will just settle at the bottom and it won't uh, make the solution quite as well. And yeah, that's pretty easy. That's how I make my first. I did a video yesterday about some easy to keep plants and ran through those with you and mentioned my recipe. So I wanted to go ahead and share that with you today. And all right. So I will flip the camera around and if you guys got any questions about this subject, now is the time to ask. Look, looks like the start of Breaking Bad, right? Uh, but yeah, now is the time to ask because I will give you guys a few minutes of my precious time here and answer your questions. And I got a seat and a sweet ass tank. Oh, sweet tank next to me. Excuse my language. Oh my gosh. I think that might have been the first time. You guys didn't hear that though. I gotta quit talking about it. Let me flip you guys over too so you ain't gotta look at me. Jeez. Oh, much better. Much better view. That and I just want to show my tank off a little bit. Papa Rhino, Mr. Sizemore is my go-to for questions on this stuff. Great stuff, Lucas. Yes, Mr. Sizemore. Uh, Water Forest aquatics he also has a youtube channel i've done some tours of his fish room i gotta go down there and get an actual proper tour someday though he is great at pinpointing ferts and knowing like what different types of plants take and what he is a master at it so i actually i mean i keep some good plants but he is a pro Bob Kaler's Fish Hobby, $20, Super Chat, holy crap. Thank you so much, Bob. I really appreciate that. It says, hi, Lucas. Enjoying the live stream format. How long since you've edited a video? Hope your trip to Tennessee went well and all was okay when you got back home. Well, thank you so much for that Super Chat. It has been, I couldn't even tell you the last time I did an edited video. It has been beyond months. But I do got a computer um on the way i'll get it at the end of november and i'll be able to get into edited videos more and yes my trip to tennessee was great got to catch up with some family that i have not seen in a long time and it was really nice and everything was good when i got back home and i couldn't be happier now that water changes are getting done tanks are getting to where they need to be i can start moving fish around and uh do more but bob thank you so much for the support like you don't know how much that really means to me it does make a huge factor on what i do around here to your guys' support like that so i really 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 appreciate it oh my cat's going crazy over here what's it doing i don't know if you guys can hear that 
Sneak up. Ooh, what's in that big Amazon box? What are you doing, cat? Cat stalking. What did you find? Oh, yeah. Tearing up my bill. Yeah, I'd do the same thing. You tearing up my bill, Scrunchy? This is the cat you guys rarely ever see. This is Scrunchy. She's thick girl, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, scrunchy loving. She's the more lubby dubby cat. Hey, easy with those claws, you. We like to let them keep their claws. Since they do go outside, she is a sweetie. And then uh, QT's doing all right. Somebody was asking about the $10 discus the other day. JQ channel says, what is the best carpeting plant in your opinion? Uh, Pearlweed Monte Carlo, those are really easy. The Microsword is fairly easy. Um, I think this, I believe it's called Marcelia. It's a slow grower, but it's easy to keep and you don't have to mow. Like the Pearlweed and uh, Monte Carlo, you gotta mow those. Dwarf hair grass, you gotta mow those. Um, in my video I did yesterday, I showed some a uh, foreground plant I made that was uh, pearlweed and how I just let the trimmings float up and then I can use the trimmings to actually make a floating plant in marsh area. All right, let's see. Allerbrett's Aquatics, I have a slimy green stringy algae growing all over my tank. It's gotten wrapped up in the plants. How can I get rid of it or should I worry about it? So take it out as much as you can, manually remove it, do a water change right afterwards, and just repeat until it's all gone. And feed your plants so your plants are eating, not the algae. Like I have this algae in here, but I contain it. Like it'll get onto like the fronds here, but I'll just pull it off as it tries to get wily. You just try to keep it maintained when you're doing your water changes. Hello, Brush Aquatics. Have you ever ventured into aquaponics? And if so, will the liquid first take away from the plants outside the tank taken in the nitrate in the tank? So I haven't done aquaponics, and the liquid first could uh, take away from plants outside the tank taken in. If you were to like hook up a system like this, if that's what you're talking about with the plants outside the tank like yeah these can absorb some but you can use that same mineralized water so people who use aquaponics often that well they use fertilizers as well and it's just the same theory of the fertilizer in the water column when you're using those solutions and it just keeps moving so what it consumes all depends on the biomass Um, black out your aquarium is not always the best option for algae, especially with hair algae because you're taken away from the plants too. But it can work, like uh, some plants don't require much light. But for those that do require a lot of light, you don't want to black those out. Is it okay to use the dry first if I don't run CO2? It's all low tech. Yes, so just think about your biomass. And you can also, EI, when it comes to estimative index, you can kind of make it your own as well. Because uh, you can kind of think about your biomass that's in the tank. So you're, you, you think this tank has a ton of plants. It's going to feed a lot more than like, say, these QT tanks over here that have just a little bit of moss. So I'm going to squirt just a little less of that solution in like a tank like that opposed to a tank like this or like this that has more plants. So you gotta think about the plants and the biomass that will actually be consuming them. I don't know why this tank's always getting green water. Them guppies are cool, red and blacks. I don't usually get into the reds, but that's a nice, nice little coloration. All right, so I'm gonna hop off here. I gotta get back to water changing oh uh before i do that beepo i'll answer this last question beepo paula was the long stem plant oh hold on turn you around here 
Uh, this is a bulbitis. It's the soft water one, not the hard water one. It's, it's really hard to grow. Uh, last name starts with an H. I can't quite remember what it is. It's actually growing up and out, which is really neat. It's not growing real strong, but it's growing. Perry Marsh, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. Perry Marsh, you have been awesome lately with your support. What fur will you grow my rainbow fry the fastest? Love the videos. I'll grow those the fastest with my uh, Tetra Color Tropical Granule Furts. And uh, I do have, I'm going to hit you up about some Alani here soon. I have three of them for you. Yes, Julian Prevalent, thank you for putting that on there. I don't think it's quite spelled right, but that's pretty close. Hudalotti or something like that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I know, I'm hoarding a lot of fish. <laughs> what i do i'm a hobbyist i'm not so much of a business as a hobbyist but i'm working on that i'm working on that but i'm gonna hop off here i hope you guys all enjoyed this video maybe you learned something and maybe it'll save you some money down the long road especially if you got a lot of tanks this is a really easy and helpful solution so hope you all have a wonderful night and i'll see you guys next time oh wait don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't Peace, everybody. Have a great one.